You're listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. Hey guys, it's Charge and represent Zoom the TBT, and I'm really excited to have the Red Scare in the house. We have head coach and GM Joey Gruden and guard Daryl Davis. Gentlemen, how are you doing tonight? We're doing good. I'm doing good. I'm blessed to be here. Blessed doing to great. be here. Doing great. We're back. We're back. We're back. And, you know, it's 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 not TBT if it's not in Dayton. Dayton is the capital of grassroots basketball. They treat the first four grade every year. It's one of the basketball, the college capitals of the basketball world, possibly the greatest mid-major program in modern history, uh, beloved by all. So it's a great place to have games. Joey, what does it mean for TBT to keep coming back to Dayton? Like, how is Dayton – through the first four, through the great play of the Flyers, really established Dayton, Ohio as a capital of basketball. Yeah, if they keep coming back, we must be doing something right. Um, I think just the fan support is always always there, no matter what it is. If it's a high school tournament, TBT, first four, whatever it is, there's going to be fans there to support. Um, Dayton basketball is really special, and it's smart on TBT's part to keep coming back. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you guys sell a lot of tickets. Now, Daryl, we talk a lot about on this show the different regions. There's a great region list. We've got Rupp Arena. We've got Hinkle. We always have Wichita. Everybody's in a primary stadium. But you think of all these other great ads, people have forgotten a little bit in this cycle just how great a facility and fan base Dayton is? Um, Not necessarily. I mean, if you know basketball, you know a lot of guys, you know, know that, you know, basketball has breeded – Dayton has breeded a lot of, you know, different basketball players and – um, hosted many events and things like that. So I don't think like it's like not known at all. Yeah, it's funny too, because like I, I like the fact that Dayton's just becoming so much more of a brand name. I think Obi Toppin getting absolutely paid in free agency recently really helps the uh I mean you guys know Obi, right? So that's gotta be you guys have been very happy for him. That's my guy. That's my guy. Um big congrats to Obi, him getting paid. He earned it. Um worked for it. I saw it when he was a you know for what sophomore, rare surf sophomore junior. Yeah, redshirt Whatever. freshman. I, we were on. I was on scout team with him, going against oh, you every day. Oh yeah. So I mean, he <laughs> always, you know, always very athletic. Couldn't stay out the gym. Couldn't nobody get him out the gym. Always wanted to dunk, shoot threes, and play basketball. So he had a heart for the game, and he finally paid off. Yeah, one of the, one of the one of the great tragedies of of COVID, besides all the people obviously getting sick, was the fact that Dayton team didn't get a shot to make some noise in the tournament. Um, so first of all, like obviously, Joey keeps coming back every year. You guys have some great fans. You guys have gone pretty deep this event before. Um, last year, you guys didn't go so deep. Uh, what lessons can we? So last year, you guys had the probably one of the biggest upsets given up in TV history. We'll stay here long. I know it's a painful memory. Uh, I was there when it happened. India rising. Now the Brown ballers got their first scalp uh, in a really tough foul game. You guys just had kind of an off night. What lessons have you learned since last year, Joey, to try to get to prevent that from happening again? First of all. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you always know you can't take any team lightly, but I mean, I think that definitely just, you know, raised our eyebrows a little more going into each game. Um, Every team is there to win a million dollars and playing for something, whether it's pride, money, contracts, whatever it is, man. So I think you got to come out hungry no matter what game it is, no matter who you're playing. Because, you know, being a Dayton, we've been in that spot where we're, we're the underdog and we, we get it. So, um, you know, there's sometimes when you're the underdog, you got nothing to lose either. So you just got to know each game means everything and you got to come out more hungry, um, hungrier than the other team. And I think they were hungry. They hit shots. We didn't hit shots. And, you know, that's a tournament. It's one and done. You got to be ready to play every single night. Now, Daryl, obviously last year was tough, but at the same time, there's lessons to be learned. And Dayton doesn't disappoint twice in a row. So you have to respect your opponents. And obviously you have to have a pretty interesting matchup with a very fun and very fast The Guys team. They're based in St. Louis. They're YouTube sensations. They're a lot of fun. So like with the great backcourt you have, the West Clark edition, Scoochie, yourself, like is the plan just to run these guys just to make them, you can get your highlights working 15 more. Like how do you want to, how do you want to make this happen for the Dayton fans this year? For um, me personally talking, I think we just want to win. You know, it's starting demons of end. Um, whatever is needed to be done, that's what we're going to do. However, we, Joey, you know, decide to, you know, scout the game. And however, you know, we go out there to play, it's decided on us. We just want to, you know, make a make the TV, make the Dane fans happy and uh, make ourselves happy and don't go out with an L in the first game. So, Joey, I, that's a great answer. Joey, scouting for these guys, obviously, because, like, they're not a traditional basketball team. Uh, you guys should have an experienced talent advantage, but at the same time, is it harder to scout a team that doesn't have exactly the sort of like international tape and the sort of like 
normal scouting reviews you would take? Is it, is it a little harder of a scouting job for you as you prepare for this game? Yeah, it's always hard, especially the first game. You don't know who's going to show up. You don't know what kind of style they're going to play. Um, they have played the past two years. I know I've watched. Um, they took Team Arkansas down to the wire, you know, two years ago, and then two first seven. So I'm already worried about that. Um, we got some really good players, though. Jordan Barnett's really good. I remember him. Um, they got a couple of St. Louis guys, St. Bonaventure guys. So we'll be familiar with, you know, a lot of their guys. I think uh, Ryan Mikes already said, oh, wow, they got who and so-and-so on St. Bonaventure. I said, yep. So I, I know we're going to be familiar. I don't think we'll take any team lightly anymore. Uh, we'll be ready to go. I'm sure Daryl will recognize a few of these names once I once I tell them at a later date. But he'll just do whatever I tell him, show up and ready to go. I know how Daryl is. <laughs> Daryl's ready to put that work in, right? So, Daryl, like, but people – and there's not many people. If you listen to this show, if you're one of our dozens of listeners, you know a lot about TP theory. We're preaching mostly the converted. But let's assume a couple of people stumbled on this – and don't know a lot about the Red Scare and how Dayton wants to play. Dayton's renowned for having a certain gutty brand of ball. What can fans expect to see from a style of player or, or ethos standpoint from the Red Scare as the TBT develops? I would say a collective group that's uh, poised, going out there, determined to, you know, play hard on the defensive end, being able to adjust throughout the game, because you know it's a game of runs and ups and downs, being able to uh, play through adversity, um, just going out there, giving we all we can, not for ourselves, but for the fans, because we know what happened last year, and we just want to convert on what happened and uh, go to the wire. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I, I think you guys have always been a really fun team to watch, always definitely come to play. Now, Joey, help me out a little bit, too, because I'm I'm not from Dayton. I've actually spent a couple of summers there. I've been there about two or three of the last years. This year, I'm actually going to dodge it and go to Lexington, Louisville, because I, I'm bad luck, too. You don't want me in the building, apparently, because, like, last time, I didn't help matters, obviously. So I'll see I'll see you guys in Philadelphia instead. But can yeah. you explain to me the whole birthplace of flight thing? Like, I always thought the, the plane went up in North Carolina. Like, why is – why is, are they from there or something? What Why yeah, is they, Dayton uh... the birthplace of flight? The Wright brothers are from Dayton, Ohio. Their, their house is still standing about 10 minutes from campus. So I, they were the first people to fly planes. So I think that's kind of why they call it, you know, the birthplace of flight. I think that's got like, it. I'm guessing that's where Wright State got their name too. And all Probably. the planes and flyers and all that. So Dayton's a Probably. big like city. Yep. Yeah. The one thing I do regret is I haven't gotten to see the 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 aviation museum there on my trips there yet. I'm gonna have to get that. I'll have to get that next year when I come back out there. If you win a game, I'm no longer toxic bad luck. Uh, okay. Talking about where the career is taking you, Daryl, um, you played overseas in Bulgaria. How was that? It was good. Great experience. Um, I was able to, you know, um, show my game to, at all levels at all areas on the court. I had a great coach, great fans over there, even better teammates. Um, I got over there and did what I need to do. And I think it's paying off for next season. And speaking of next season, I know it, it, with this time of year, it's the agents are working on things. I know most European deals are year. You probably have an exact idea of where you're going to go. But is there some something you're looking for in a team you're trying to get with? If you ask me a team that I want to get with or a place I want to play, um, for me, it's about the money. So take me to Greece or take me to China somewhere. <laughs> 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 it's all about it's it's all it's all about the paper, right? It's 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 funny too because like people always talk about the people who don't think money's important have enough money where it's not important. Everybody else, money's still relatively important. Hey. I mean, I love my job, but I'm not working for free. Let's be very clear. I get paid to draw these buildings. I don't draw the buildings for free. Now, Joey, you also had an interesting professional year. Now you're now a stick coach at Stetson, which is in Florida, which is very exciting. And you guys won the automatic bid and qualified for the tournament this year. So, first of all, how exciting was it to win a tournament bid as a D1 assistant coach? Yeah, it was awesome, especially Stetson. It was our first tournament berth in school history. So it's been 53 years to finally Ooh. make that happen. It, it was pretty special. The whole community was jumping. The game was awesome. Um, so just to be a part of that was was really special. Um, and hope we can keep building on that. So so you get there, and they immediately make their first tournament. So it is like the Joey Gruden effect. Like, you get this guy, you definitely immediately make the tournament. So that's a, a sign out there for the, for your for your smart ADs. You're looking to hire a senior assistant or a D1 head coach or something. Um, how, how has TBT, being a head coach in GM and TBT, helped your development? I mean, when you started this process, I believe you were a grad assistant when you started the TBT runs has, can you draw a direct line between your TBT relationships and experience and your development as a D one coach? Yeah, I think it was huge. Um, 
I did it the first year with COVID, the bubble year, and I was, I think, year one or two as a GA. So I wasn't planning on coaching, but I just kind of got thrown into the fire and I loved it. And it just helped me with confidence, you know, the ability to connect with the guys and, and coach and be free. And, you know, for them to listen to me and follow my lead was huge. Just, you know, give me that ability and confidence to, you know, do what I know I can do. And it was huge. And it helped that we won some games and made a good run too. So I even felt a little better about myself, but you know, it's good. Even anytime pros listen to you and they trust you and, and follow your instincts, it's, it's always a good sign. And I think it's helped me grow as a coach. Definitely. I mean, I, I think, I think watching this event and for the last, it's been a decade now watching the development of all the people involved getting more confident as players or coaches or any role they have in the tournament. It's been a nice like grassroots way of letting people who have a passion for basketball develop whatever their role is going to be in that. Uh, so I think it's really cool. Actually, I think it's been a lot of fun to watch this. Now, Daryl, same sort of thing as a player. Like I always think this is such a weird time to schedule. You guys, first of all, overseas players, People don't understand how good overseas players are, how great like they can still play. So again, like the, the NBA is only like 400 jobs. Like I, I always say all the time, I'm a great architect. I am not one of the 400 best architects in the world. No fucking way. Like I, I'm really good at my job. So the idea of like you're on the NBA, you're no good. That's insane. Like these guys who are playing in Bulgaria or France or China, they're still putting up numbers. They'll still walk into any gym and go nuts. So like, yeah. how has being a TV player helped your professional development? Um, for me, um, I would say this, and um, uh, was like uh, open honesty. I would say like not being able to play against like certain guys. Like, I think we played against Marquette, and we played against DJ DJ. What's his name? DJ M. DJ O. DJ O. Yeah. yeah. You know, not being able to play in the league he played in, being able to play against him in the TBT and match up with him, and being able to get stops against him, it showed me that I'm able to you know play at that level, and I just like. I'm forced into playing TBT because it allows me to play against those guys that are, you know, at higher levels than me and things like that. And I'm, you know, having a confidence in myself and Joey and my teammates having the confidence in me, allowing me to, you know, guard those guys and get stops and play offense and score all those things. It just shows me that um I'm able to do those those exact same things that those are guys are doing even better. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely insane. I mean, I, I don't know, you've actually definitely put the clamps on some guys. I think you actually could could probably put the clamps on Jimmer if you had to, to be honest with you. I mean, that's the kind of guy who could stop that guy. So, so getting into that a little bit, I do want to look forward with this. So well, I want to stay on this for one more topic. So you're doing a lot of recruiting at Stetson, obviously, because this assistant, that's a primary thing. It's not just game plan, but also recruiting. Um, just as a side note from TBD, how has the transfer portal completely changed the 24-365 nature of being a coach, like you have even less time off right now because not only you're recruiting high schoolers, you're re-recruiting your own team. Is that just been a more difficult part of the coaching career in college now? Yeah, I think you can ask anybody. It's been it's been a challenge. Um, it's different. It's I don't know. You got to adapt though. I mean, season's over and we play on Friday night against UConn. I think we get back Saturday night and by Monday morning, half our team says they're leaving. So. You had about a day and a half to enjoy the season. <laughs> um, and then you're right back to it, trying to find, you know, five grad transfers and two more freshmen to fill your roster. So it's oh definitely God. different. Um, you know, when you win, though, people want your winning players. So, I mean, I get it. I don't blame the bigger schools for trying to take our guys. They're, they prove themselves and, you know, they're going to make money at a bigger school and it is what it is. But we'll adapt and we'll adjust and, and keep going. Does that does that change the idea of like because it's it's weird as a, as a guy who's primary college sports fan I, mean, I love the NBA I'm a Grizzlies fan but like I am at my heart a Memphis Tigers fan that's how I got in this event is watching them having uh, speaking of underachieving TV team teams oh my god they lost once as a one seed as well I think they got stopped one year it's a one seed um, but the reality is like does it change the relationship of a player with the school now you think Joey because like it's not it's not like I'm not making a judgment call like if you can make money doing it you should so I'm not this is not a complaint I want to be very clear but it does it change the sort of nature of the coach school player dynamic a little bit not even in a bad way is it just different it's a little different I mean we started summer workouts two days ago or three days ago and you got a whole new team so it's basically like you know you're starting over each year you it's hard to uh I don't know. You can't at the same time, though, as a coach, you realize you can't please everyone. At the end of the day, you got to you got to do it. You got to do to win each, you know, win each year. And at the end of the day, someone's probably going to leave. Um, you hope they all stay. I mean, as a coach, you want them all to stay and develop them and grow them. You get attached to the kids and want them to be best. But I mean, at the end of the year, if they have a decision to make and they think it's in their best interest to leave, you kind of just know that going into it. But 
you know, for those 10 months or 11 months you have them, you're going to do everything in your power to grow them and, and develop them and build a relationship with them and, you know, try to do what's best for them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you're, you're still at your heart, a, a coach and a leader of young men. It's that's, that's part of the job there says, even if they're not there for as long as you normally would have them, it's still a relationship you want to build. Now, Daryl, when you were at Dayton, obviously there was no NIL. First of all, would you like to have played in an NIL era? <laughs> of course, I probably, I probably would have fake injured to stay in that extra year for that money. <laughs> <laughs> You would have been like, oh, I played 13 games. Oh, my liver. And it just like fell down. <laughs> like, oh, oh my God. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. But I mean, you you played all four, you played all four years of date, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So is it a little bit different as a player? Like, and this is again, this is not a criticism. The players should get paid. They should get paid more, in fact. The NIL is only a band-aid when actual pay of salaries due to the actual TV rights is where this eventually ends, I think. Like people should be being paid actual money from the schools, not from the fans, not through NIL. That's that's where the story, I think, ends. But is it different playing for a school when you're not being paid? Like, is there still it, – it, does it hurt the front of the jersey part of the fan base? I, I'm just asking. This is, again, not a criticism, just, just a chatting point. Like, do you think it, that fewer people might play for the front of the jersey as much as they did before, or am I just overthinking it? Uh, I'm probably overthinking it. Yeah, that's tough. Um, I'm overthinking it. I'm overthinking I mean, first it. For example, for example, Daryl, you could have, you know, after your freshman year when we made the run with seven guys, you probably could answer the transfer portal and you probably would have got five hundred thousand dollars from Michigan State. You know what I mean? That's that's what's going on nowadays. So I think guys are, I think there is a little bit more playing for the name on the back instead of the front. Um, yeah. But I do think the really good players realize winning brings you know, recognition. So yeah. I mean, first, it, it, it depends on like, cause I mean, so if you a lottery pick, right. And you know, you want to, you want to call this a, you know, one and done and you're going, you're going to do, you're going to Kentucky and things like that. Obviously you already got NIO deals and things like that. And you, like I said, a lottery pick, are you about to stay in college or are you going to get the real money? Well, yeah, going to the NBA, of course, but we're not talking about those guys. We're talking about the, you know, the, the really good college players who aren't going to make the league. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Front of their jersey or the back of their jersey? It's got to be both, right? It's got to be both. Depends on, the person. Play for Depends both. on the person. Depends on the person. <laughs> okay, I'm trying. I'm treading a little out of my depth. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go back to TVT and I get back to the the matter in hand. Let, let's move ahead to where we're at with uh, this season cycle. Let's get to that. As opposed to me trying to fix college Bosque which is frankly abo above my pay grade. I'm not that smart. So Joey, first of all, fun bracket. And you guys have one of the major impact transfers. Tell me how Wes Clark is now a Dayton grad alum. Yeah. So uh, that was a huge pickup for us. I think um, obviously I heard Buffalo wasn't going to be playing this year and, you know, us playing them two years ago in the final four, we knew they had a lot of good players. Um, so I think, you know, Daryl, knows Wes a little bit from being from Detroit in the same area. And it kind of just worked out. He was looking to play for a good team and be a part of something. He went to Missouri. So I think it was between us and Missouri. And, you know, I got on the phone with him as soon as I found out and talked to him about our team and he was excited and just wanted to play for a good team win, and, you know, have some fun doing it. And, uh, you know, I think he's drivable. He, I think he's come from St. Louis actually. Um, so his family can come see him play and it, it just worked out, you know, region location, having played us and, you know, just trusting us. So it worked out. So, so Daryl, you, Wes and Scoochie, I mean, on a break, does the ball touch the ground or are you just going to just going to literally get out there and go like this ball is even, is just, it's just going to be this. It's going to be, yeah. Advance the ball, take threes, open layups. That's it. The whole game. <laughs> that's got to be a nightmare actually, because like that as a three headed backcourt, that's just, I mean, you can't, you can't hide a, a weaker defender on any of you guys you can't because everybody can go off the bounce and everybody can pass and shoot like all three of you can pass shoot and drive all three level guys so it's not like is that dynamic something that you're looking forward to scheming joey like are you kind of salivating having that kind of a backcourt yeah i would say so um just, <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting you know you got you got daryl who's gone for 27 the tbt 28 whatever it is you got scooch who scored 28 in tbt you got west clark who's a tournament mvp I mean, you got three guys right there who can score at will. Then you got Cybert, who's also scored 20 plus in games before. You got 
Mike Sell, who scored a bunch. I mean, we got guys who can really play on our team this year and, and make plays. Um, uh, we just got to get them to gel, play together, and, you know, pass it. Maybe we can be like the Boston Celtics of the TPT. That's my plan. That would be nice. A lot of switchable size. And that may, and that's a good point, too. So I was going to go into this. And, Daryl, also, I'm looking at this roster. It, this roster is intense. But uh, it's, a, it's a smaller roster. There's no way around that. You guys have – it's not small at – per position you've got size at every position but you lack like the actual size so is there an advantage like you guys aren't going to be big or small you're going to be kind of medium-sized basically is that going to be are you just going to basically try to play five where everybody switches and it's just not a not a post play kind of thing everybody's just going to switch gang rebound and just get out and run i'll let i'll let you answer that one okay fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. uh yeah we'll definitely be doing a lot of that just don't sleep on josh and marcus though i mean those are two they may be only six eight, six nine, but they are some strong dudes. Um, they're not gonna get bullied. And we got a new pickup, Cleveland Melvin, who I'm really excited about. He's another six eight stronger <laughs> dude. So, I mean, we got we got some size. I'm not worried about our size and strength this year. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't saying about strength, I was just saying pure, pure size. I know, yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot of guys who are six, 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 seven, six, eight who play perfectly fine the post when the when the uh when the uh question arises. Okay, Daryl, uh Trey Landers, staple for the team, great player. He took the year off to play slam ball last year, which as a guy who enjoys slam ball, I find that endlessly amusing. But at the same time, I'd rather play DBT because while slam ball is fun, it's not a, a sport. It's a spectacle. I don't know what that's all about. Do you guys give him some 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 uh, grief about playing slam ball? Have you guys talked to him about that yet? Or well, well, have you guys talked about the slam ball experience? I haven't talked to him about the slam ball experience at all. Um, more so about, you know, if he's coming back to play basketball and things like that. Um, we know Trey, like always hard nosed guy, willing to you know take charges and you know willing to get up his body for the team. Uh, very vocal leader. Um, a guy that you you know one of your team because he's going to give all he got all the time. So, yeah. Daryl, would you want to play in Dayton with trampolines too? <laughs> no. <laughs> just put no. trampolines in the court, and just to have people flying forty feet in the air. That would no. be a. Uh, it's not a great way to get hurt, right? I mess around hit my head in the rim or some crazy happened. Everybody start laughing. Yeah, yeah. You, you get your head, you get your head hurt. You might have to run for president with brain damage, basically the way things are going politically. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, so Joe, so Joey, looking at this bracket real quick, you've got a really solid team, really solid bracket. Uh, the guys in the first round. So first of all, like that's a fun matchup, but like they have actually, you said they've pushed. Uh, team Arkansas before so like what are you guys going to have to do to win this game yeah we're going to have to do a little bit of everything I mean they've played together a lot too it seems like you know what they're playing in adult leagues all across the world it seems like on YouTube and but I mean they got guys from St. Louis they picked up Hargrove I saw the other day who's coming off a really good season and a really good career at St. Louis they got Jordan Barnett like I said who's who's really good player and they got big DeMarco Owens back who I think scored 20 plus a couple of years ago. I mean, they got dudes who can play. They're not scared. They're going to come in confident. Um, they got nothing to lose. They know they're the underdogs. I mean, shoot, they know we just lost to an eight seed last year. They're going to be fearless. So we really got to come out, you know, with our mouths foaming like we did a couple of years ago and be ready to play some basketball. Cause I think they're going to be really good to give us a challenge, you know, especially that first game. It's hard to get those jitters out. Um, but we just got to settle in and, and, you know, come ready to play. Daryl, what does the crowd at, the Dayton UD arena have to do to get you guys where you're going? Um, I think it starts with us, you know, the day before the game, night before the game, the preparation that we, you know, do with Joey and Bonsu. But um, this defense for us, the crowd, you know, the crowd is going to be the crowd. Um, we know if we lock in, the crowd will come to us, not more so to us come to the crowd. Okay, yeah, the crowd, the crowd, and the crowd usually at UD does help you what you need to do. They usually do give you that extra six-man feel. Uh, Joey, Let's say you get past the guys. Let's make that logical leap. Carmen's crews reloaded, retooled. They're a little younger. And then you, if you get there, you'll be on your home floor if you get past them, but you'll likely be playing the defending TB chance in hard fire. And while they may be literally 70 years old, they can still ball. I mean, they may be old, but they're still a complete nightmare of size, rim protection, and savvy. So how, how hard could this road end up getting for Dayton? Like, is the home court going to have to help you? Because, I mean, that's – the guys and then Carmen's and then Hartfire, that's not an enviable task to have to face. Like, no favors past the first round, correct? Correct. I mean, 
I think we've talked about it. Every game's hard. I mean, the even I go back to the year we made our run. I go back and look at it. And that was a tough road, too. I mean, we played – shoot, a really good team with Josh Selby first, and then we played Marquette defending champs, and then we had to go play Jimmer for Dead and, and company at the money team, and then we had to go play Best Virginia, and then we had to go play Buffalo. So, like, every time you win, it's like, damn, we got to play them. We got to play them. It, at the end of the day, though, it doesn't matter. We just got to do what we do and come out ready to play. And, you know, we just got to have that hunger that we – I think we missed last year. We got to be a little more hungry. Yeah, got 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 to miss a couple of meals. Okay, so Daryl, the thing about playing in states that are Big Ten states, like I went to a Big Ten school for grad school, and grad school is different undergrad. It's you're pro, you're pure mercenary. It doesn't you don't have the same loyalty to your grad school? You never do. Like I like Illinois fine, but I'm a Warshu kid, and people know that. Like your undergrad's what's more important. And there's a bunch of great programs in Ohio. You've got you guys, you got Cincinnati, you got Xavier, a lot of really great programs. Um, but like obviously Ohio State's sort of the big name uh program is there like a certain satisfaction in knocking off the generally larger program in the state not better but larger program in the state i think it is um i think for the fans it is i think for us it's another game we go out there every game and just play hard um we know that uh they're not gonna be taking us lightly we ain't gonna take them lightly either um it's gonna be a game of runs ups and downs and we also know that you know it's a whole new team you know they more younger I, I would say more quicker and things like that but um it's all up to us I would say it's never them it's always us yeah yeah definitely okay so look we've got we've got the general storyline here I guess Joey I want to ask you a couple other things real quick this has been a fairly expensive cycle for TBT they've been pretty open about that there is an entry fee this year they have made teams pay uh do you want to sort of thank some of your fund, some of your, um, some of your fundraisers, or some of your um, sponsors who have helped you get this far? Of course, without them, we couldn't do it. Um, obviously, we got the University of Dayton, who's been super helpful, um, putting us into dorms, um, giving us access to practice facilities, all that good stuff, um, taking care of us when we're on campus. Um, then you got Timothy's, obviously Timothy's Bar and Grill, the best bar in in Dayton, Ohio. I think Daryl could attest. He doesn't even drink alcohol, but he'd still go and show up and have some fun. Um, great time, good food, good drinks. Um, and you got obviously Orion, you know, they help us out with the therapy. They keep our guys fresh, you know, for free on their own dime. They just do it. They do NBA guys and they, they take care of us, which is huge. Um, and we're, we're also supporting the Dayton six um, NIL companies. So they've been helpful. Um, we're trying to create that a partnership that we can, you know, go throughout, you know, many more years to come. And obviously the GoFundMe is huge. I mean, the Dayton community, just random people donating left and right when they don't have to do that is huge. Just seeing $50 here, $50 here, $25 here, you know, that, that adds up for us, which is huge to get, you know, fly these guys in across the country, feed them meals, give them a place to stay. It's expensive now. It's 2024. So um, TBT is definitely getting up there in price, but we got some good sponsors and good people helping us out. Yeah, I'm really glad that teams that are established are able to really get where they need to go. Daryl, I'm going to close with you. Um, I'll give you one last question. And obviously, I'm really happy for you guys. You guys have been, uh, built a great program. Um, well, first of all, a funny question. How do you plan on spending your share of the million? Every year somebody asks me that, and I have the same answer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. First, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, this. I don't, for me, I, I don't really think about that, you know, until, like, it's, like, the last game, the championship game, and, you know, the brother was off, and it says we won, Redskins won the championship, then I figure out, and, you know, it hit my account, stuff like that. But right now, I have no idea. Maybe I'll, I'll have an answer for you know, somebody this year. Okay. You know, actually, let's ask the coach then. Joey, how, how would you spend the money? Yeah, you know, good question. Me and my uh, wife are expecting a baby, though. First baby, so – I have to give her a shout out. She's been doing great. She's been supportive of this TBT experience and it is my baby. Um, <laughs> I did that. So <laughs> yeah, we're having a baby girl. It's actually supposed to be due the day after the championship. So if we can win that money, I can hop on a plane and, and, you know, go be there and make a lot of money supporting that baby. Ooh. Yeah. Philly, Philly, Philly to, uh, to Dayton direct flight for a new pop. I think it's a, Really good plan. Let's like a, a flight there. It's got to be like less than 200 bucks to get from Philly to Dayton direct, I would assume, on, on a Sunday night. Celebrate yeah, the definitely. money, get on the plane. Yeah, I mean, the, the game's at like two or three. You can be on a plane by seven. You can be back in Dayton that night. 
It can if happen. We it, if we win it all, I'm making Daryl the Godfather. That's all I know. Oh, there we go. Done. <laughs> it, it was announced. Daryl, if we win, you're the Godfather. This is this is done. This has happened. Congratulations in advance. I think that's a good place. That's a good place to leave this. Okay, so we have Joey Gruden and Daryl Davis playing for a scholarship fund for Joey's daughter to be. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hainer. Subscribe to YouTube, follow on Twitter, and give us your money.